Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for coming back and taking a look at my video today. So my name's Nate, our company's custom made by us. And one of the main problems that we deal with with the DTF printer is um, humidity and static electricity. So where I'm at in Boise, Idaho, my uh, humidity right now is at 36. So when it's low like this, oh, sorry, I almost dropped my camera. When it's low like this, the uh, humidity, when it's low, static electricity tends to be a little bit higher than what we like. So what happens is, I'm gonna turn the camera around and kind of go into an explanation of what we deal with. So, and again, this video is more geared towards people that are DTF printing. So if that's not you, you might not get any uh, insights out of the video, so. So when the film comes out of the printer, this, um, part of the printer is warm and this uh, is actually really hot. This is a preheat. Um, so when the film comes down on the preheat, it helps to kind of uh, cure that ink a little bit before it goes down into the powder section. This section of the intake tray is not hot at all. It's cold. Uh, and typically what happens is this film can start binding up on this entrance tray into the powder shaker because of the static electricity. And then what happens is the film starts to um, do this in the printer. So as it backs up, it'll start bowing up like this. And if it bows up far enough, luckily there's little holes with a little vacuum that help hold that film down. But if it gets up high enough into the printer and that head assembly is going back and forth, um, you're gonna crumple up this film underneath there like no other and potentially damage those print heads. We have two print heads, one is white and the other one's the CMYK. You damage those print heads, they're about $1,500 a piece to replace them. So we wanna avoid that. And again, a lot of the time sitting here babysitting this thing and if it starts to back up in here, there's a pause button on the printer that I've always, I'll press pause, kind of move the film around to get it to break free open this up, reach down inside, grab the film, wiggle it around, break it free, you know, resume the print. You know, so this thing that I'm trying to put on my printer um, may or may not um, fix that problem. So what I've done is I've created these little wooden uh, rails. They have a nice smooth edge on them. Um, and again, this is just my little prototype. They're just right now just taped with double side tape to the metal. Um, and they go from the top all the way down to the bottom of the uh, intake tray where um, it picks up from there or drops off from there. So my theory is when the film goes down and it's on here, the film isn't completely on the metal. So the surface tension is not as great. I mean, it's literally just riding on these you know, three little strips of, of wood currently. Um, if this works well, then I'll uh, redo these in a nice uh, clear acrylic plastic, and then I'll um, countersink some uh, magnets into the bottom of these so they can be taken off so you can clean the tray, and then you can, you know, with magnets, you can move them around and get them to line up and adjust with your film how you want them. So this is uh, iteration one, or prototype one, uh, I am going to print a gang sheet order and uh, see how this does. Because again, it doesn't do it all the time. I mean, I can sit here and print and it'll never, it'll never bind up. Um, I have other days when I print and, you know, the longer you print, the more it wants to create that static and start binding up. So we're going to see how this does. So I'm going to start the print and we'll come back to this. Okay, so the print is underway. This is a small one. It's only a 22 by 60. Christmas is right around the corner, so I'm um, getting orders in for obviously Halloween and fall, but uh, people are preparing for Christmas as well. So we're gonna see how this one rolls in. So it's gonna drop off onto my rails. gonna see how that goes. It'd be nice if it works. And then I'll like I said I'll create some nice ones out of clear acrylic and 
just countersink some neodymium, uh, neodymium magnets into it. Some nice strong magnets to hold them in place. So at least you can take it off easily to clean. And so I'm going to the foam. It clears the entrance pretty well. So the, the little slope or ramp that I did on the side of this ramp was probably not even necessary. So you can see right there, it's literally, it's only touching those three spots. So the surface tension again is not as great as if it was completely against the metal. So we're gonna see how well this does. I'm always leery at how close this gets to here because the closer this is to here, the closer it is to trying to back up into the printer. So. But I would normally babysit this and sometimes I'd even put my hand on it and help pull it down as it's going down into the intake tray to make sure it goes. So with this, we're gonna see what happens. Take a minute before we start seeing it come out the bottom here for the shaker. There it is there. I would normally grab it by now, so I think I'm gonna put the camera down for just a moment so I can do that. So I take my little magnet Grab the film. <clears throat> so when it gets close enough to the metal uh, ride bar, I'll put the magnet there. And I'll do powder manual to get the powder dropping. Sometimes it doesn't drop, so I gotta kinda tap on the screen down here to kinda get it to distribute the powder a little bit better. Kinda, I don't know, the powder gets kinda stuck in the, the grate. So I'll do that, and then I'll turn on powder clear, which that's the little paddles down here. So again, I get a nice, this isn't a real long print, so I'm not gonna put too much powder in my loop. So I think that's probably good. So when I start to see the actual image coming out um, on the intake tray, I'll turn off the powder manual and then turn on powder auto. So now it'll just distribute powder on a little timed sequence. You'll hear it go bump, and it'll drop some powder, that goes. So far, so good. The underneath the side of the film is not, um, again, it's, it's riding on these little wooden rails right now, but um, they're really smooth. It's not gonna scratch it, but again, there's no ink, there's no powder, there's, there's nothing that happens on that side of the film. So I'm, I'm not that concerned with it riding on those rails the way that it is, so. Again, this is a small, 22 by 60, it's already at 75%. So this print will be done even before it probably gets down into my loop. I'll bring this up some more. And then I have to manually kind of work this through the through the system, so. But so far, so good. I like the way it's writing. Let me set this up here. You can start to hear the uh, powder clear paddles are starting to hit the film. It's just fine. We're at 85% on the print. Mm 
You gotta be careful with this sitting here with the magnet as the loop gets further and further down and the paddle clear is tapping the back of the film. It could eventually knock the film off of where your magnet is. So what I do is once this gets down fairly low in there, I'll take the magnet off. I'll grab my film and bring it up to the conveyor belt, but not necessarily to put it on there yet. And I'll put the magnet back down. So this is 97%. It's gonna be done even before I put it on the conveyor belt. So you can see the printer just finished. So I'm not in the oven yet. I got a good powder loop going on down there. So um, what I do at this point is, I can see I'm about five, six inches off the base. So I can bring this down manually with the down button. Okay, so that brought me down. Bring up the frame a little bit more. I'm going to turn on the vacuum at this point. So I take my magnet and I put it on the film over here. I take my scissors. So this is kind of a two handed thing where you're doing this on this side, but also having to manage the film on this side. Bring my film back up. So when the powder starts getting quiet, that's not what we want. Or the powder clear, so I'm gonna bring it back in. So now it's just a manual process of feeding it in the rest of the way. Always make sure I get enough powder down in my loop to fulfill the job. Um, I can see how much more I've got to put through and how much powder realistically it needs to, to go on. So then I just hand feed this down. At some point I'll turn off the powder auto because I have to put my hand in here to grab the foam. And again, with powder auto on, it's just going to powder your arm. So right about this point here, I'll turn off powder auto. And then I get my hand down enough where I can not, not see my hand, but know where I'm at. I'll go ahead and do a switch here. And I'm on the inside holding the film. And again, this is only at the end of a, of a job, so you, know, you only do this, hopefully, if you're doing your jobs in a nested batch. You know, you do this maybe once at the end of the day, but the jobs are coming in sporadic, even. You know, it's just a, a little process. So I get to a point where, by hand, I get the film down there far enough that I know it's not going to be a problem. So and then at that point you can take your arm out. And just let it do its thing. Sometimes I'll turn on the powder manual. Just to get a little dusting of powder on the the end that's sitting down there on the bottom. See, I'm off on the conveyor belt. So unfortunately, right around this time is when my uh, Rode wireless mic decided to go to sleep on me. So I no longer have any audio on the video um, through this portion, through the remaining part of the video. So I will narrate um, what we have going on here. So just repositioning the film. I was talking about how the... Um, film at the bottom um, at some point it's no longer in contact with the bottom of the powder shaker and that's when I turn off the powder clear button the little paddles so I think I'm getting ready to turn that off at this point because I don't think it's riding in there anymore go back to the desk 
that's the uh, leader that I use when I uh, get my film going into the system. So I'm going to cut off the leader so I have some extra room on the desk for the actual five foot gang sheet. And again, there's that waste, waste film. Um, it's maybe 12 to 18 inches. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's on every time you start a print. So if you've got nested uh, prints for the day, that's nice because then you've only got uh, one leader and one tail. A leader in the beginning of the day and a tail at the end of the day. Um, but that's not what I'm doing right now. So we're going to get this printed out. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner, so I've been printing a lot of um, fall and Halloween. Uh, but we're also doing, um, seeing a lot of Christmas stuff come in. So this uh, gang sheet against 22 by 60, it's the Grinch. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, yeah, you can see I'm talking, but the uh, Rode wireless mic on my collar is um, is dead. No more lights on it. So, the print came out really good. Um, choked it at 0.1 of a millimeter. Did some prints the other day that uh, they had such fine lines in it, I had to set the choke to none. Uh, if you choked at 0.1, uh, even a 0.1, you're gonna not have an under based on some of the lines that they had. So, took the choke off altogether at zero and uh, still did decent uh, obviously this Grinch Christmas print is going to be greens reds there were some yellows in it uh, but all the colors looked really nice so I'm just about done with that print the print is actually uh, there's a little dryer at the exit part of the powder shaker that it goes through but this is Actually, um, it's already dry coming out. Oh, this is when Jody came out and was asking me about my password for Amazon. So probably a, a good idea that audio wasn't working. I could have cut that out, but still. Um, I'm sure I'm chatty in the video. I really can't remember what I was relaying, but um, yeah. The whole premise of this video, again, wasn't to show you printing a gang sheet. It was me to test my little rail system, you know, that we um, had or that I put in to see if it's going to help avoid the static electricity that we have. So I needed to turn on the air purifier. Oh, got a couple of drips of, I think it's glycol, is a, a byproduct of the powder adhesive in the heating curing system. I think it draws that up into the uh, air purifier tubing, and then it just, unfortunately, it's leaking out. So i got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. It's not the best method, but it works to get rid of the fumes. Move the camera over here. So at this point it's almost out. I mean it's once it reaches the end you can pretty much you can see I'm pulling on it. So it's coming off. So I'll lay it down on my desk. We'll turn off oven vacuum and preheat. Wipe down that little bit of glycol on the top of the oven. I think I do it on the purifier as well. Out in the shop. Always got to have that fly swatter ready. Kill them little sons of guns. And that's it. So the print itself came out decent. I'm going to show that. And then... Uh, talk a little bit about 
how I feel the uh, system went. So I got to wipe down the table because I, I do lay glue uh, adhesive or glue side down. So we do open a lot of packages and boxes on these tables. So um, a lot of the times there's cardboard dust and shavings and obviously I don't want that uh, getting on the, the print. So I'm going to grab the, the print here. It's nice to, to work with a, a little print, easy to flip it over and look at it and review it and quality control it. Sometimes you get some super long ones that are just a nightmare. Pull up my sweatpants there. <laughs> and now we're going to just take a quick look at that printout. So again, the whole sheet is uh, Grinch uh, Christmas related. Merry Grinchmas. Greens, reds, and the yellows on the bow. I mean, everything came out uh, really good. The gradient on that. Uh, the image did have a lot of white and soft edges. Um, so I did run my Delete Transparent Pixel from Adobe uh, to try to clean it up a little bit. So if I didn't, there would have been white borders around all of the graphics or images. So um, doing that kind of cleans it up and looks nicer. So when the client gets the image, it's not... You know, they don't have this white border around it, um, which they're not aware. They don't see it. The dead or transparent ghosted pixels, our eyes do not see them. Um, I do have a process inside of Photoshop that allows me to see it uh, and a process to clean it up. So that's what I do. I will post this gang sheet online for sale. It'll be $30. Um, you'll just go to ready to press uh, gang sheets, go to Christmas. This will be there. Um, add to cart, check it out, we print it out and send it to you. So graphics look really good, very clear, um, very pleased with the way this game sheet printed. So kind of rolling up here on the end of the video. The uh, Again, the main premise for the video is not my game sheet, but over here, the rails. You know, how did they work? So for me, they worked fine. Um, I don't always have static issues. I mean, I could run a printer too and not have a problem, but you know, it's not always the case. So I'm gonna have to use this for a while and see how it um, pans out. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up at this time. Uh, if you like my video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, S subscribe to the channel, um, click the bell notification so you can get notified. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Take care.